Welcome to Hiranya Medical Service. Five minutes to a better health by our eminent doctors. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Anand Chokalingam. I'm a cardiologist at the University of Missouri in Columbia, United States. It's a pleasure to meet with you. Today I wanted to quickly discuss the difference between heart attack and heart failure. When we hear the word heart attack, it implies myocardial infarction. This is a medical emergency that develops as a chest pain or pressure in the middle of the chest, usually sometimes going down the arm, going up to the jaw as discomfort with sweating and trouble breathing. This can typically start suddenly when people are exerting, sometimes in the middle of the night it wakes people up and this needs immediate attention because there is blockage in the blood supply to the main blood supply to the heart. There are three main arteries, front, left and in the back and if any of them have a complete blockage, that is when we say heart attack. In the hospital, we are able to give medicines do balloon, stenting, sometimes even bypass surgery emergently to get enough blood to the heart and save the heart muscle. When we come to heart failure, this is a weak function of the heart. There is left ventricle, right ventricle and valve issues and muscle pathology. So there are lots of reasons for a person uh, to be having heart failure. This is typically over days, weeks that it manifests. It is not within minutes like a heart attack. And uh, heart failure typically manifests as trouble breathing when we are trying to do things, climb stairs, carry groceries, or when people are just sitting, they may still have challenges catching their breath. So this heart failure, a lot of times is due to prior heart attacks, but many times it is also due to alcohol, prior viral infection, sometimes there are genes, so familial cardiomyopathies, there are hundreds of reasons for a person to develop heart failure. So we do some specific testing, exclude any blockages, and there are many, many medicines that improve symptoms as well as improve the longevity and health of people with heart failure. Hope I clarified the difference between heart attack, which is myocardial infarction, and heart failure, which is a pump problem causing fluid to back up. The difference between heart attack and stroke. A lot of times when we see people in the emergency room with uh, acute chest pain, sudden weakness, it is hard to make that differentiation. But in essence, heart attack is reduced blood supply that happens immediately because of a blockage to one of the arteries taking blood to the heart. So you feel it more as chest pain. Stroke is very similar in the sense there is a lot of times reduced blood supply to the brain where uh, we may lose the ability to move one side of the body, lose vision, uh, headaches, things like that. So how do these things sometimes uh, overlap? Because patient presentation is sometimes uh, confusing to the clinicians. So we have to do certain tests in the emergency room to determine what is going on. Uh, but the important thing is both of them have an origin in vascular disease. Vascular means atherosclerotic basis which develops from teenage. Every decade slowly the block buildup happens in the arteries that take blood to the vital organs. The way we diagnose and manage heart attack and stroke differs based on where the problem is, but uh, what we want to emphasize is prevention is very, very similar for both these entities. We want to address smoking, blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, and ensure we avoid sedentary lifestyle. So all these are the biggest risk factors, for both for heart attack and for stroke. The next question is, what is the management of stroke? When a patient presents with a stroke, earlier the treatment was conservative. 
only in the last 10 to 15 years we are seeing significant benefit and increase in the number of acute stroke centers where within few hours of development of neurological symptoms if we can do the appropriate scanning we are able to take them to the invasive procedures and fix the blockage that is developed in the blood supply to the brain the reason we do this is we can ensure brain blood supply is adequate and we can limit the complications that come from blood thinning medicines and clot busting medicines that we have used in the past for coronary artery disease and heart attack we had the transition about 25 years ago now for stroke in the last 10 15 years acutely when the facilities are available and trained personnel interventional neurologists are available stroke care can be done invasively to optimize medical and uh, neurological outcomes but in the big picture i want to remind that preventing this is the best uh, way of managing both heart attack and stroke and for that lifestyle is very very important thanks for watching do like share subscribe and click the bell icon button to receive instant updates